<laughs> All right. Hello, Hello Andrew. Uh, Hello, Nate. This is our friend Dapo. Our first guest. Hello, wow. Everyone. Welcome to the show, well, Dapo. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, man. Excited to be here. Yes, yes. We are very excited, too, because we've never had a guest before. And we kind of don't know what we're doing, but that's the fun part, right? We're trying to set the bias as hard as possible. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so Dapo, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit um, okay. for our guests, and we'll go from there. Uh, hello, I'm Dapo. Uh, I'm a freshman. Uh, these are two of my mentors. Uh, yeah, I don't Where know. Where are you from, Dapo? I'm from? from Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, the nice. Way, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say our location. Oh, but, it's nah, okay. Sorry, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Bay Area. Yes, yeah, so you're, okay. you're a freshman in college. Yeah. You're not in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. not. <laughs> yes. So what, what brought you from Chicago to San Francisco of all places? I thought the weather would be nicer. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, no good. I'm, I, there are a lot of complaints, but today's a good day. Yeah. Today is a very nice day. Yeah. Good day to film. Yes, even Indeed. though we were inside in a shed. <laughs> <laughs> the walker was nice. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. So Andrew had a few questions for you. So Yeah, nothing, nothing crazy, but no. I don't know if you heard there might be a chance TikTok gets banned. TikTok? Yes. Yeah. One of my friends mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. Are you a TikTok user? No, I don't. Really? I have it downloaded, but it's because when someone sends me a video, if uh, it loads the web page, yeah, it takes yeah. too much effort. It's, it's so. bad. But I don't use the app. Really? Okay. Do you, how many people do you know that use it regularly? Regu a lot of people. <laughs> like too many to count, right? Maybe not TikTok, but like just like uh, short form content in general. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah. people. Yeah. Whether it's YouTube or Instagram yeah. or TikTok yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Cool. So what do you feel about the fact that TikTok might get banned? Like, uh, okay. <laughs> if I would probably say it probably shouldn't get banned. Okay. Because I feel like that's some sort of uh like censorship mm -hmm. i think i do think it's interesting though like if there was a because i don't think short form content is good it's like a good way to go about things mm. i feel like people get like kind of hooked that like oh i get that hit of information like immediately mm. i don't think that's good for like just the brain in general especially because it's like a lot of kids are on TikTok, mm -hmm. and so they're going to get older. It's like a book. Why would I read a book when I can <laughs> get information like much quicker? <laughs> yeah, maybe we shouldn't do short form content. <laughs> like it works. That's that's really so. There's a couple things there. Um, you mentioned you don't think it should be banned, but you also gave reasons why you don't like the app. Yeah. So let, let's just start with why you don't think it should be banned, though. You mentioned censorship, right? Yeah, I don't think it should be banned because the people banning it have a different. Uh, they. They have a different reason than I probably have. Mm, they probably okay. are banned for like, there's probably like monetary reasons involved. I've heard like a lot about like spyware. I mm. know close to nothing about that. <laughs> so all my reasons are like, I am coming from a completely moral and ethical standpoint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For why you dislike yeah, it. Yeah. I am the moral yeah. standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm not super fully read, but it is because it is owned by a Chinese company. Yeah. There's a lot of allegations that the Chinese government is using it to collect data on its users, which are mostly uh, children, you know, people under 18, between yeah. 13 and 18. Um, so that that is the reason why they're giving for banning it. But who knows, of course. <laughs> yeah, I guess TikTok, you know, you have good things and bad things on it. And I guess mm. the question is, yeah, if they ban it, where would all of that content go? That's a good question. Okay, because in terms of content creating, yeah. I know a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, TikTok is like, it's good to get my content out there, mm -hmm. even though it's, I think it's hard to grow on TikTok compared to like other apps and also their revenue isn't that good. Yeah. But like, it's very easy to build like a, like a base of followers on TikTok, mm -hmm. even though I know a lot of people are like, like a million uh, subscribers or something on TikTok or a million views on TikTok isn't like a million views or subscribers yeah. on YouTube. But like, I feel like if you're trying to stand out, since like everyone's creating content mm -hmm. nowadays, Having like you have to have some way to like outreach to people, so TikTok is probably good for that. I, I don't see. create content, so yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. A lot of people have said that actually, it's tools for like video editing and recording and stuff is actually much more powerful than yeah. like, competitors. So it's just easier to get stuff out there. You don't have to like have a computer to edit. Yeah, just press record video. and you can yeah, like, edit and on you can do all these crazy effects, all yeah. these you know, cut you out and do green screen backgrounds, really easy and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I've heard the algorithm is incredible 
I've never used it, but everyone I've heard online says like after a few videos, it knows your tastes very well. Yeah, yeah. that That's I. Nice. Yeah, what do you think? Oh, you can. Sorry about that. No, <laughs> this is my first podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I Go got on. it. I think I think it was around before the pandemic. Wow. I know okay. there are like other iterations. Like people say, I think it's supposed to be from Musically. Yeah. Because when I created my account, I already had an account, and I was like, what? Oh, I wow. didn't have an account. But then I saw the username that they gave me, and I was like, oh, this is like an old account because mm. it was like a really embarrassing username. And I was like, <laughs> I would not have used that if I was like over the age of like 13. So yeah. this is like a really old account. Yeah. But I got it during the pandemic because I was like, my brother would use it all the time. Yeah. And I was like, it can't be that good. And I tried it. And I was like, this app is kind of whack. Like, I wanted to be a hater. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. uh so i already went into it like oh tiktok sucks mm -hmm. but then i got hooked like immediately wow. like they had everything like uh movies music anime sports like everything was there and i was like how it's like they know me and then after like a month <laughs> i was like hold on it's like they it's like they really know me. it's like they really know <laughs> <laughs> they know me better than i know myself exactly so. and so i was just like I've talked to some people and they're like, yeah, it's like the app is so addicting. It's hard to get off of. Mm. But for me, I was like, oh, the app is addicting. And so I just held it down and I clicked X and I deleted it. <laughs> and so then some people started sending me videos and I started loading yeah. the web page. So I yeah. re-downloaded the app. <laughs> but I don't really, I'm thankful that I wasn't really like, oh, I can't get off the app. I was just, I was like, it just, it's just one delete button. So mm. it's good, man. I wish I had like the clap one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> we should. I'm sorry. My first oh, time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Here. <laughs> All right, Andrew. If you... All right, I'll try to remember. That one. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, I, I think that's very interesting. Um, are you Gen Z? Would you say you're Gen Z? Is that right? I don't know, but I think so. I, I think technically, yeah. You are, yeah. I think it's interesting because like your generation is the one who would use TikTok the most, and so you're like the most affected by it. In my mind, I think okay. There's a lot of other people on TikTok too. Like I heard Joe Biden hop, hopped off on it. There's a lot of political things are on it. People use it as like a source of news. Mm -hmm. right? So like that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Like they listen to you know doctors or people who claim to be doctors who are on it. So then they get all of their information from that. I guess my question is like more: Where do you get your information? What do you trust as like a Ooh, source? Trust. This is going to get controversial here. Who do yeah. I trust as a source of news? Okay. In terms of like news channels or stations, <laughs> I don't think I trust anyone anymore. It's, <laughs> it's like, I feel like everyone has some sort of agenda. Now, mm -hmm. I have like, I forget the like website, but there's a website that shows you like what side of the political spectrum right. like mm -hmm. most major news channels tend to lean on. So... But it doesn't get rid of the problem. It's like if I have an issue that I want to like research, mm -hmm. I go on the spectrum and then I see like I'll grab like four different sources mm -hmm. and then I'll go read what they have to say. And so they'll have like different points. But I'm like, OK, all of it is biased in different ways, but it yeah. all, they all have like the little nuggets of truth. Mm -hmm. So I don't really trust <laughs> it, it, anyone. <laughs> I kind of trust like the people. Yeah. You know? oh, OK. Because mm -hmm. even if like. Because most people aren't going to be informed about a topic, like they just don't care. But the way the topic like comes off to the general public, yeah. it like it holds some, I guess, sway for me. I'm like, even if that wasn't like the intended purpose of this news, like this is how the public is receiving it. So this is how it's going to be described and received for years to come. So I guess all that just to say Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. It's, it's now. Oh yeah. Elon Twitter. Twitter. Please, <laughs> unfortunately. Twitter. Yeah. <clears throat> interesting. That's really interesting because like you're basically saying you don't trust any, any, any public source anymore, which is so I, different. I think I know that website actually. Maybe we'll put it on the yeah, description. Yeah, uh, I think it's called Ground News um, where you, 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 it lists out all the sources yeah. and how far left or right or central that they are, as well as for each article, how reliable the, that source is, like its reputation basically. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool, but then... I was like, that is a lot of work to yeah, go through yeah. all that. I just want like something really simple. <laughs> Which I guess highlights the nature of the problem. Mm. Like there's just so much bias, so hard to find unbiased information or yeah. I guess the solution is find every biased information and sort <laughs> and it sort out. through it. But it is exhausting. You, it's mm. hard to care about these nowadays because there's just so much like you have to like, is that really the problem or is that mm. just how someone wants me to look at the problem? Exactly. And then it's like, ah. Uh, and then my one of my teachers, like last year, he told me that you 
only hear about the news stories from areas of really nice hotels because no reporter wants to be like holed up somewhere where there's no <laughs> yeah, like sure and i was like that's low-key facts because <laughs> there's like all most of the news like you hear about is like oh but i already know like these countries surely there's no shady business going on in a country i've never heard of <laughs> but you know i guess mm. i can't complain <laughs> <laughs> so i guess you mentioned that you you're fine with tiktok being banned um, but I'm curious, what do you think the ramifications for, like, your generation would be? Like, your friends, you said you have a lot of people you know that use it, and they probably use it for entertainment, but also information, yeah. and what, what do you think the ramifications would be? Okay, I hope they're not using it for information. <laughs> I think you'd be surprised. <laughs> I can't, I guess I can't say that because I'm not on the app, but, mm-hmm. like, I guess maybe just what I was watching on TikTok, I wouldn't be like, oh, these guys are also giving me, like, news, mm-hmm. but I, I... I heard that TikTok is like now like they set the trends and like the standard. So mm, if it yeah. got like uh, banned, then I guess it would probably just find somewhere else. Yeah, it might go to like Instagram or something or like Twitter. YouTube like, Shorts. YouTube Shorts. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think it getting banned would really have any like major. Maybe people would be less willing to like use. I don't know if people would want to post themselves on like YouTube or something that's been around for so long because TikTok it kind of feels like it's like a in the moment. Yeah, like. It YouTube's doesn't, it doesn't like, stick around. Yeah, YouTube's been around like my whole life. Yeah, you can look up videos from years and yeah. decades ago now, whereas TikTok, you know, you don't like look for videos. Yeah, you just you get fed stuff. For the old stuff. I feel like TikTok is going to be something to like kind of hold on to. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I remember back in the days of TikTok. You can't really say that for like <laughs> when YouTube. When I was your age. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Which is interesting. Maybe this uh, n- next topic we can talk about is that I've heard that TikTok is actually becoming more unpopular amongst your generation. Um, there's many factors to that, um, but have you noticed that at all, despite the many people that use it a lot? No, not no. really. <laughs> you I haven't think, seen that? Yeah, I think people want to dislike TikTok, uh, okay. but it's so addictive. It's mm. really just you, you know? It's showing mm. you yourself, so I don't think there's yeah. anything to dislike. Interesting. I, yeah. People want to, like, be different. They're like, because that was, like, what I was on, like, before, when I didn't use TikTok, because I didn't really use social media before mm-hmm. pandemic. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, it's just another social media. Like, social media is, like, lame. Like, why don't yeah. you, why don't you re- live in the real yeah, world? Like, yeah. I was one of those kids. Yeah, yeah. And then good. I used it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. But if it wasn't, because we needed, like, some way to, like, entertain ourselves during the pandemic. Yeah. So I was like, but then it got to be too much. I was like, I forget what it was, but one day I was on the app and I opened it just to check real quick. And then like four hours later, I was like, oh, okay, no. this app has to go. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just scroll once on TikTok. Wow. So that's why I deleted it. Hmm. <laughs> Man, I, I, I can go a couple different ways from yeah. there. But so I've heard that TikTok has become unpopular because older people are now on it. <laughs> Which is, it's kind of funny. That's, Older than us. Yeah, yeah. We're not, like, we're not like that's what happened with Facebook, right? Facebook was kind of our generation's thing, but then suddenly my parents got on it. <laughs> and now it has turned into the old person platform. So all of us, we went to Instagram and stuff. Okay. Um, and then your younger generation's like, ah, forget Instagram. Uh, let's move, the, kind of just naturally, organically, just move to something else like TikTok, right? And I don't know, I think this is just the trend now that these online spaces they're just not going to last very long and like you said i think we're going to very soon be looking back and say ah remember when tiktok was a thing regardless of whether it gets banned actually um just because that's just the nature of the internet and things move so fast um for better or for worse i'm not sure what there's much to draw out of that but it's kind of interesting how um, the lives of online platforms are getting smaller and shorter and shorter yeah maybe maybe it's because like i hope I don't in like five if, if Instagram is not around in like five to like ten years, <laughs> that would be crazy to me. But like you guys probably thought the same thing about like Facebook. Or yeah. Like, uh, oh, what's yeah. the other one? MySpace. MySpace. MySpace yes. I don't know if you guys are looking at MySpace. Anyone? Like MySpace is gonna last forever, but like that's because there have been like other apps like mm-hmm. uh, Uvu. Uh, I don't, you might not know what that is. A uh, Kick. Uh-huh. But like those apps, maybe it's because I was like still young when I was on them. But like to me, they weren't like the giants, and so then like Instagram. I'm looking at Instagram, like, Instagram is definitely going to be around for, like, a long time. Mm, yeah. Even, like, Facebook, because I never had a Facebook account until s- the pandemic, because mm. my school required us to have a Facebook wow, account. That's they how required they, you. Yeah, that's <laughs> how you, like, keep up with, like, the news and all that. That's because crazy. I guess So I got on Facebook just a few years ago, and now I'm not on it anymore because I graduated. And so, to me, I was like, oh, yeah, Facebook is crazy. But, like, Instagram... <laughs> 
like all my friends are on Instagram. Yeah. Even like they're adults on Instagram. So yeah, when, yeah, like totally. if Instagram's gone in like ten years, I'll yeah. be like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> That'll be like my first taste of getting old. I saw someone's <laughs> Instagram the other day, and she's older, but she's not even that old. She's like mid twenties, mm-hmm. and she was like her her like uh, profile was like I'm on Instagram now because old all the old people are on Facebook or something like that. <laughs> I was like, well, to me, I would consider her like a little bit older. You're old, man. What do you mean, the old people? (laughs) Yeah. Maybe we'll send people on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's something about technology that we don't like recognize or are unwilling to recognize is just how short lived it all actually is. Like, it seems so like permanent. Like, it's on the internet, right? Nothing on the internet ever ever goes away, um, as people say. But (laughs) the fact that yeah, MySpace died in like, I don't know, it was like less than 10 years. <laughs> and Facebook, like, yeah, it was like everything was on Facebook. And then like there's still a large population on there. But it's like, depending on your demographic, like no one goes to Facebook. <laughs> there's nothing on there that you want or are interested in. And as impossible as that feels like for Instagram, right? Because literally businesses are like run there and stuff. Um it's just inevitable, actually, that people are going to move on. Technology is going to change, you know, like all this VR stuff. Um, it's like people think you just go, oh, we will just do Instagram on the VR headset. Well, no, it's not going to work. There's going to be something new. Um, and I don't know. It's just like the fact that this is only taking like maybe a decade or two to move on. It's actually pretty crazy. Like everything else in human civilization usually takes centuries to go through, to move through, right? Trends are so much longer. But this technology is moving so fast and it really i think it points to the just how temporary and fleeting things are oh my gosh did my camera just turn off <laughs> and we're back, we're back. <laughs> Sorry. we had some technical difficulties you might see it cut just now <laughs> yes um, i don't remember where it cut off but we were talking about how technology is changing really fast yeah. and stuff like that. So it doesn't can, last. It doesn't last. Um, and I would say most things in life actually don't last. But we, we can move on um, because we, we while well, in our break, we had an interesting thought um, we wanted to ask Dabo. So, yeah, but like you mentioned a lot of bad things <laughs> about TikTok. And Anything good? Yeah. Anything like, I, yeah, it's entertaining. <laughs> it's entertaining. I, I want to maybe go from this angle. I was really caught by your statement of how it knew you. Yeah. Like, I think you said, like, you were seeing yourself. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. it knew you that's better than you. Yeah. Which is very, like, that's actually a fascinating statement because it's like, isn't that not, like, our goal in relationships is to know people? And yet, we can say this technology knew us probably better than other people. Um, Did you say technology? Technology. Oh, no. It's, uh, it's got me. Technology. Um, <laughs> but I'm just curious what your thoughts are on, like, I mean, like, can, like, can technology know us? Like, what does that mean? Is that significant? Like, what does that mean for, like, our knowledge of each other? <laughs> like, our relationships with other people? I don't know. Well, with other people, you never really like a hundred percent know like hmm. what they're thinking or what they think about you yeah they're kind of just like hoping like oh hopefully they don't think i'm like a horrible person based off like <laughs> like i do good deeds to them hopefully they think i'm good but like with like tiktok it'd be like i'll see a post of like a movie i liked mm-hmm. and i'll like the post right and then the next post is about a movie that i haven't watched but i'm looking at the like the synopsis and i'm like oh this looks like a movie that i would like wow. and so and then i watched the movie i'm like i really enjoyed this movie <laughs> But TikTok knew I would enjoy this movie before I before even knew what this movie was. Even knew it. So I was well, like, suggested. although that's <laughs> like good in a way, because even if you're like you're on Netflix and you watch a show, give you like your recommended shows, mm-hmm. but you know they're kind of like hit or miss. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess the TikTok it could have been a miss. Like it was just kind of a chance that I enjoyed the Perhaps. movie, but I just thought it was kind of odd because like with Netflix, it's like they're telling you like, oh, these are movies you're gonna like. With TikTok, it's just like, oh, this is a random <laughs> post that someone across the world yeah. just posted and you guys just so happen to like the same movies. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, that's not exactly what it is. Like you guys knew, like based off like the tags and whatever your algorithm has going on, yeah. you knew that this would be something I would, like you knew I would at least enjoy the post and mm-hmm. I did enjoy the post and now I'm back like, oh, maybe they have another movie for me. And it was like, <laughs> I don't know. It's endless. There is yeah. an uncanniness to how, how well they figured you out. Yeah. <laughs> you could say. Um, and I think, I don't know. Is that a good thing that humans can create technology that's able to figure that out about people? Is that a good thing? It's impressive. 
And as like a programmer myself, I'm like in awe, you know, I'm like, wow, how did they do that? I want to know like their algorithm. Right. But is that a good thing? Uh, I, it makes life easier. Like, mm, if, like, okay. you know how sometimes you just scroll on Netflix, like endlessly, like yeah. I guess rid of like that problem at least, but like, if I just had everything available, like it sounds good, but like to actually like have lived that out, I was like, hmm. like I'm complaining about a movie I enjoyed. <laughs> like, what am I doing right now? Like, if I went to like a fast food restaurant and they're like, you're gonna like this. If it's a person telling me that, that's like one thing. But like, if I go up to the thing and like mm. I log into my account, and it's like you know, based off of like what you ate before, yeah. this meal is perfect for you. And I eat the meal and I enjoy it. It's a good meal. Like I'm enjoying my meal, but at the same time, I'm like. Bro, this is a roll bar. It Bro. just doesn't feel right. And so, I don't know. Like, that's what's, like, kind of throwing me off about it. I guess, I guess real life is less perfect. Less able mm. to actually get you the thing you want. Yeah. People. People can't actually get you, like, what your algorithm can get you yeah. instead. And so, that's really interesting, right? Like, you just said it was really convenient. And, right, yeah. that would be awesome if I pulled into a restaurant and I didn't have to choose what they wanted to eat. They you would just, just say... You just need better friends. That's what you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who really knows. No, I was out with uh, someone uh, like two days ago and we were in the city and she was like, what do you want to eat? And I was like, I don't know. I'll eat whatever. And she was like, you aren't making any decisions. It's like, <laughs> she was like, you're worse than like a girlfriend. Oh, like no. you, You're not picking at all. And I was like, it's because I prefer to save my brain making capabilities <laughs> for other things. But I just did. I honestly just didn't care. Yeah. And then she finally picked and I was like, I actually don't like subs. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's not eat there. Let's go somewhere else. So so let's co- let's take that situation. Let's contrast that. A restaurant that based off of all its data that's collected about you from other restaurants, you just pull in and it gives you the perfect meal versus you go with a friend and like you go back and forth. You have this conversation. It's you're messy. joking. And like you end up with food you don't like. Yeah. Which one's better? <sighs> okay. <laughs> if... If, like, let's say I knew technology was my friend, right? (laughs) Then in this situation, technology would be my friend. Mm -hmm. It's a friend who's recommending me the perfect meal. But this isn't, the technology is not a real person. Mm -hmm. It's, and I don't know the intentions of the people who are coding the technology, Mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, they're not sharing my uh, data so that this, the restaurant knows, like, they're not sharing the data so I have a better restaurant experience. They're sharing yeah. the data so they can make money. <laughs> so just off of those intentions, I'm like, I don't know. That's not good. And it also, I, it, it's going to sound like kind of crazy, but I like the idea of like uh, suffering or at least suffering mm-hmm. for something. Mm-hmm. Because like when my friend, like with the meal, I didn't care about what I ate, which is why I didn't want to suffer mm-hmm. through making like the decision. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when she brought up the sub place and I was like, okay. I don't like subs, so this is something I'm willing to suffer for. Whereas, like, same with, like, movies. I enjoy movies, yeah. so I like watching good movies. But if I just consistently watched 10 out of 10s out of 10 out of 10s, <laughs> I don't even think I would appreciate movies. Mm-hmm. So it's because I've watched the bad movies that I'm like, okay, this is a really good movie. And so I feel like you have to at least have, like, that hint of suffering to mm. know when you're experiencing something good, you know? Man. That was really deep, man. (laughs) There's a lot in there that you just said that is so against, like, not only our natural instinct, but what, like, society often tells us, right? Yeah. (laughs) Because it seems like we always want easier, more convenient, like, more to our taste, more personalized, right? That's, That's why all this technology thrives so much. And yet you you weren't like, of course I want the restaurant to pick one up. (laughs) There's all this other stuff there, right? There's layers. It sounds good, but I don't think. You guys know, I think his name is Robert Nozick. He's like this philosopher oh. and he has this uh, thing called the thought, the experience machine. And so it's like this machine that you plug in and you can experience like, and you like to you, this is like, that becomes your reality. Mm-hmm. And you believe like whatever you can program any experience, like, and you can live like, you can become like an Olympic athlete. You can become the best chef in the world. And then like the whole point of what I'm trying to get at is he ultimately decided that most people would decide to not plug into this machine Mm. because people want to actually, they want to do something, not just experience doing something. And Mm. they want to be someone, not just experience being someone. Mm. So I think that's very similar here where if I'm just like, because if the robot is like guiding all my decisions, it's like, this is the car you're going to want. This is the food you're going to want to eat. Like this is basically the life you're going to want to have. I'm like, how is it making these decisions? Yeah. Like, if it de- if it decides like the next three years of my life for me, then it makes further decisions 
based off of those three years that it created and then it keeps <laughs> streamlining my decisions i'm like mm. it basically just manufactured the rest of my life mm. from it's a taking away point. your free will exactly wow wow speaking of free will watch our free will episode <laughs> <laughs> where we talk about the implications of that yes. but wow yeah yeah there's something about real life that isn't about making everything easy or better quote mm. unquote better right like you use the word suffering. I'll just, use the word friction. Yeah. Friction? yeah. Suffering is a very, like, <laughs> it can describe a lot of things and like suffer. Like, I think there's a time and place for it. We can maybe do an episode on suffering, but like, yeah, you wouldn't say, oh yeah, that person who like lost their family is suffering. Oh yeah. You're going to, that's good for you <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, like you mentioned that going against like having some friction or like some difficulty, you know, that makes life like worth living. And, like, it's not about, like, oh, because I grow or, like, I'm, I'm a better person even. It's just, like... That's the stuff of life. That's just life, yeah, right? <laughs> that's just life. It's more real that way. Mm, yeah. I feel like for anything to have substance, mm. you can't just be, like, given to you. Mm. Like, that's, like, you know how, like, people always talk about, like, celebrity kids, like, how they don't appreciate, like, what they have. It's, like, how yeah. could you appreciate it if you don't know, if that's all you know? That, exactly. Like, if I grow up and I suck at basketball... I could choose to suck at basketball <laughs> or because you're not just going to be good at basketball. You have to suffer, exactly. right? You have to work so for right. you to get the, or I guess friction is the word we're using. So for you to become good at basketball, you have to, you know, actually practice. Mm -hmm. And so when you do become good at basketball, you're going to be like, okay, I experienced the friction to make this happen. Or you could just make the decision to not care about basketball. You're like, okay, I mm -hmm. suck at basketball. That's the end of that. So you're choosing to not suffer so or not have friction. Mm -hmm. So through that lack of friction, you just stayed the same. So if I wanted to change, I would have to experience that friction. If I suck at like reading, I have to, <laughs> I have to, if I, like school, yeah. if I'm in a subject that I'm not good at, I have to actually put in the work to be good at that subject. Right. So putting in the work would be the equivalent of that friction. Or I could just choose to not be good at the subject. That is a choice I could make. But if there's a robot telling me, it's like, <laughs> this class, you're already going to be good at this class. This so take this class. Perfect class for and, you. Yeah, it's like, I... I don't even like this class. You just told me I like this class and now I'm here. So hmm. Go, Going back to that, I guess if you get used to a life or an algorithm with less friction, but life has friction, then you probably wouldn't feel very good if, you know, you encounter things that don't work out the way you want to in life. Yeah, that's the thing with like a political like bubbles. I think mm. it started with Facebook, but mm. maybe not. Mm. Where like you can like just join a group of people yeah. who have like the same beliefs as you, like would be like the the guys in a basement shed group or something. Like that. And we all like <laughs> yeah. members of that group. So it's, it like becomes echo, like an echo, echo chamber. chamber. Yeah. Yes. And um, so when I meet someone who's not in that group and they're like, Oh, that's kinda strange. Like you guys just gathering in the shed in a basement. I'm like, <laughs> We are no. in a shed in a basement. <laughs> but it's not an echo chamber. <laughs> And I'm like, no, that's not weird. So now you're weird because yeah. you believe that's weird. Yeah. But that I, the reason I don't think it's weird is because everyone I know is also in that group. And everyone that that person knows is in their own group. So mm -hmm. then we're going to look at each other as as if we're like enemies or something. But it's like, no, we're just two people with two different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I don't like echo chambers. I like the idea of having people to obviously like... Uh, agree with me but <laughs> i wanted to say echo my beliefs but, that'd be like, <laughs> but if i like get into a group and they only like they're like oh my goodness stop well you know you're so right yeah while i'm in the group that would be perfect because i'd be like oh i i guess i am always right <laughs> but then as soon as i leave the group if anyone opposes like what i have to say it i wouldn't even the thought of considering what perspective they're coming from would never cross my mind if i've never experienced people with those perspectives yeah. immediately i'm just like no you're wrong you like you wouldn't be with my in group so immediately this yeah. conversation has to halt i think that's kind of dangerous because the tiktok algorithm mm -hmm. it's only going to show you what you like that's right. and so you're just going to continue deeper and deeper into what you like and so as soon but life isn't like you're going to experience things <laughs> you don't like in life sure. and so as soon as that comes up it's like it's almost like a, I've seen it in real life before, and it was like it was like those zombie movies. Wow! Like the guy was like, I can't believe you would even have that opinion. I was like, <laughs> the opinion of the person had wasn't even that far stretched, but it's just his echo chamber was so like there was so such a close community, which sounds else good. Likes it, yeah. And it was like the it. closer the community is, like the guys in the shed community, like we might have other things going on. Like that's not really a specific community, but if it's like a political co uh, community mm -hmm. sure. if any other political like believe like 
it comes up, they're going to look at it as like pervasive. They're like, what? That makes no sense at all. Yeah. It's just crazy to me. But man, no. Yeah. And I think you're just, what you're describing very vividly is one of the many problems <laughs> with how our technology has kind of turned into this kind of, you know, these um, self-powered feedback loops, basically yeah. of, Oh, you're into this. Well, let's give you more of this yeah. and it becomes your reality basically. Yeah. Um, or you know, like addiction, dopamine. Mm-hmm. It's giving yeah, you, there, there's all it's sorts of even different. different to that, yeah. yeah, we haven't even gotten there. Um, but it's it's like suddenly it's we're in this virtual world and with no friction, like everything's awesome, and yet we still are in real life, right? <laughs> and you experience some of that oh opposition and life isn't perfect, and because you're so used to. Uh, everything being perfect and catered for you. In your when algorithm. You, yeah, when you experience that um, tension or friction, you're like, my world is over. <laughs> like, it's, it's over. <laughs> like, this life must be terrible. I need, I need help, <laughs> right? Like, this is not the way life is meant to be. Um, and so I think that's why some people will say that we are now a nation of wimps. You know, <laughs> it's a title from a book. Yes, it's a book that you should probably read. Calling people wimps. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's because of that that experience. And man, yeah, we could talk about echo chambers and the problems with algorithmic, you know, we'll that for another episode. <laughs> perhaps another episode. But perhaps to end on a better note, you know, we described all these issues with technology and social media and TikTok, blah blah blah. But like, is there anything good? Do you think that we can do? Yeah, like. Anything we can good that we can take away from these things? Yeah, for well, like TikTok is like really entertaining. <laughs> maybe maybe too entertaining, but we're focused on positive. Right yes, now. positive. TikTok can be entertaining. I did enjoy the movie they gave to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's good, right? Yeah. That comes from and if I'm in an echo like chamber, you also get to build up your beliefs, right? Like, uh, hmm. if you like, if you're like, uh, I don't know, if you like a book and you're like. Man, I wish I could talk to someone about this book. These echo chambers, they <laughs> offer you that outlet. <laughs> but perhaps, perhaps we'll use a different term than these echo chambers. We'll call them communities. Yeah, yeah right, that's right? essentially what they yeah, are. Yeah, and I think the internet's really good at forming and finding communities, right? Shared that, interests. Yeah, back in our day, we would have to, like, go <laughs> around the streets and talk to people and find out what they're oh, interested you. in. Oh, like, like, you. Club. <laughs> yeah, Club but, but like, yeah. let's say you're really into woodworking. You just go on the internet and like find all sorts of other people that are into it and you can learn from them. Yeah. And so I think what you're describing is, um, yeah, the, the, the positives of community, right? It's not, it doesn't mean that we are all supposed to be separate little entities and not, not enter any groups because then we'll only believe what that group believes. Um, yeah, community is really good and powerful and it's good to come together. But the problem is that when you sit in there and all your beliefs get filtered <laughs> through that, you have to be willing to step outside the community and enter other communities. Right and go to try some other communities. And, yeah, like not try. There's them, a lot of friction there, but interact with them, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, that's totally a positive that I would take away. Yeah, I love the internet because we can connect and find people that are interested in what I'm interested in. I, mean, I can learn, yeah. right? Guess for better or for worse. Yeah, for <laughs> better. But I, I totally think that's a positive. Any, anything else? What yeah. would what what else would you? Use? Something I thought of that was like uh, kind of similar is. Like you guys will like go outside, but that's kind of like cringe. But <laughs> it's cringe. I grew up with brothers. <laughs> I grew up with brothers, and mm. uh, we're like relatively close in age. So my community would have been like them, right? Yeah. But then, uh, you know, we're still different grades. So then we'd all go out and would experience like other communities, like the people in our grade, and they would all come back with the different things we had picked up from them. Mm. And then that's like a, I, I guess that's like a easier way to address these like different like outside beliefs. Yeah, so because we're not the same together. people anymore. Yeah. But when we were younger and we, we were the only people like we essentially knew, we're like way more similar than we are, mm. or are now. Mm. And I, I don't look at them like, I can't believe he's into that now. I'm like, wow, <laughs> he's into that. Like, I would have never even like thought of like getting into something like that. Mm. But like, there's beauty in that. I mm-hmm. believe so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of of difference, of exposing, being exposed to new things. Yeah, right. Without being attacked. Yeah, without being <laughs> attacked. Oh no. All right. It, well, one more, one more good thing about, about technology uh, that maybe you think might be good or possibly be used for good. I don't know. Surely, surely. Maybe, maybe news? I don't know. <laughs> well, we were just talking about how it, it could work. Be, it, it could, but it could work for mm, news because okay. rather than the news being like centralized, yeah. like I saw mm. like a crazy stat when I was like a freshman, like all major news corporations are owned by like three yeah, families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like if everyone had, if everyone could be like a, 
journalist in a sense. Although that doesn't sound good because some people like, you know, <laughs> now that I say it out loud, I'm like, maybe some people shouldn't, <laughs> should've, yeah, shouldn't like give their opinions on things. I think what you're running into yeah. is what people experience where there's an, a, an aversion to a central authority and you think, oh, they, there must be something sinister there, right? Yeah. Because it's just them in charge of the news. For example, like journalism. Yeah, it was very centralized, but that authority also gave them um, like like believability. Like you could trust them. But when you naturally um, decentralize everything, now it becomes a, you got to figure out who's trustworthy. And so I think there's benefit, like somewhere we got to somehow get into the middle, right? <laughs> Where it's not, okay, everyone just been to one central authority on this, but not, oh, it's free game. <laughs> Say everyone has yeah. the same voice on people, what's happening in the world. <laughs> people like to, because I think it's fair, like you deserve to speak your mind mm -hmm. on something, but mm -hmm. people... Like, they would rather just not get educated. They're like, <laughs> okay, this is my viewpoint on this perspective, and that is how I'm going to forever view this problem. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I think social media is good in the way that it would allow, like, if I experience, like, some sort of injustice, I can just, like, pull out my camera and it's mm -hmm. going on social media. But then everybody, like, wants to give their thoughts just based off of that video. And it's like, no, that video was just meant to, like, open your <laughs> eyes towards a problem. You don't have to immediately have an opinion. Like, obviously, you're going to have that, like, initial reaction, mm -hmm. but you don't have to... I have to tell people. <laughs> not everyone needs to be commented on. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have like knowledge, like yeah, not everyone, not everyone should be given the same voice actually, yeah. because we all come from different perspectives and experiences, and we're not all going to be authorities. And I think that sounds uncomfortable for people, right? Like, yeah, well, people get pressured into having opinions. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, you you should be actually comfortable saying, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You inform me, please. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, we don't have to all be trying to be experts on everything. And but that I think sounds we, crazy to say, uh -huh. but that it, 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 makes, it makes total sense. Yeah. If you don't know that you don't know. And it's not a bad thing. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. and I think it's just with the pervasiveness of this kind of technology, we kind of feel like we have to be because, like, other people are or, like... Or... Or we feel like we become experts just by yeah. watching tons of videos that yeah. Sure. Yeah. reinforce our viewpoint. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, who are you to tell me what to do? I know better than you. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, I got a little bit of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. And that, that brings to mind something maybe we should make a full episode on is the, um, it has a name. I'll put it in the description. But that point of knowledge where you, th you have some expertise, but you don't have enough knowledge to know what you don't know. There's a name for it. It's like a graph where basically yeah. your confidence, you go up here and you're like, you think you know so much, but you actually barely know anything. Right but, <laughs> but the fact is, the place of true knowledge is when you understand how much you don't know about a subject. And then you can go and learn and become the true what master. What don't you know, Dombo? That's, that's <laughs> Aristotle, right? <there. laughs> but in any case... Wow, I think just for time, we're going to yeah. start wrapping things up. But thank you so much, Dapo. That was really thank interesting, you actually. Me. Thank you for I having me. I enjoyed talking about that. I think we could probably talk about the same subject over and over again. Yeah, they call it yappy nowadays. This they call that yappy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yapping is um, But we'll, we'll, we will certainly have Dapo back on yeah. the show to talk about something, perhaps for that sure. is something different, perhaps <laughs> movies. We've been diving into movies a lot yeah, recently. I love movies. Yeah. So. <laughs> but in any case, with that... Um, I think I'm, we're going to end it, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe and like. Um, and Notifications. We, yes, hit that notification bell. <laughs> I hear a lot of people want to know when our next episodes are yes, coming out. So yes, there you go. That. So in any case, we'll all see you later. Take, Take care, care, guys. Man.